I am unashamed. What about you? Welcome back to Unashamed. Uh, we in, we encourage Uncle Si to stay on with us uh, for an episode. Si, it's good to, always good to have you here. It's always a pleasure. Um, we got paid him with my silver. That's why he stayed. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> when you somebody says silver and gold, I do not have. Yeah, right? I said that yeah. earlier. When you came in, well, now yeah. you have silver. Well, you're quoting verses too. You know? Well, no, no, because I was preaching to a guy in in jail in Oklahoma. Oh, really? And I I used Paul's thing. You know, he got in my face, and he said, "Hey." You're a big star, and you got all this money. You need to get me a lawyer and get me out of here. Yeah. And I said, son, I just, I said, silver or gold, I ain't got it. <laughs> I said, but hey, what I've just shared with you, because I said, I shared with you the most important thing that you'll ever run up on on your life. That's right. And I said, that's Jesus Christ, just his story. Right. Who he is, what he's done in the past, the present, and future. Right. Yeah. And I said, and when I leave here, because he got up my face and the deputies come out of the walls, fix the, you know, settle him down. Yeah. But anyway, I said, hey, when I'm gone and you're in that cell by yourself, I said, these words will come back to you. Yeah. I said, you don't want no silver or gold, son. Yeah. Silver or gold can't help you where you're at. Yeah. A lifestyle change would be good I for said, you. Yeah. Well, and Phil on the last podcast made a good point about that. Most of the biblical writers, they, they're, they're, they were, in, they were in jail yeah, yeah. in the name of Jesus. So he's not about getting you out of jail necessarily because yeah. most of them were writing letters from jail, but they were in jail for a different reason. And even then, I mean, there's a couple of moments where, you know, you had the, the prison break that, that God got them out. But yep. for the most part, they stayed in there. Yep. For a reason. Well, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, uh, to impact people for the kingdom. It's like this, uh, there was a guy I heard speak one time, and he was a major drug dealer. Uh, he was homosexual. He had all these issues in his life, obviously, and he wound up in, in federal prison and literally just thought, well, I'm going to die in here, you know, just where I am. And somebody had thrown a Bible away in a trash can, and he, and he saw it in the trash can. He picked it up, and he started reading it. Oh no, we, he! I heard him speak. Yeah, Christopher Ewan. Uh, yeah, his name. yeah, it was, and, uh, it was quite the story. Powerful, and now not not only left the homosexual lifestyle, and of course the drug lifestyle, but now is an advocate for God, like you would not believe, because he picked up a Bible out of a trash can and he read it, and he thought, <laughs> "Now here's something I've never heard yeah. before." Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the power. What we were talking about—the power of God's love. You know, all these passages. The Sa brought up that one. It's not about yes and no, which kind of went along with your sermon yesterday. But in Christ, it's all, it's always yes. But that's Second Corinthians 5, and, and what happens is everybody has this moment when you realize you're mortal, and it gets your attention. It may not change your life, but it gets your attention because you realize, I'm not going to be here. Yeah. Long, even though people kind of denied in the in the way they they live their lives, and I've had moments like that. You feel like it's always somebody else, but at some yeah. point, it's you. It's going to happen. And you know, in Second Corinthians five, when he talks about you know we groan, longing to be uh, clothed with our heavenly dwelling, because it, he he had started off that section say, saying that if we know that if our earthly tent we live in is destroyed, well. It is going to be destroyed at, at some point. Oh, yeah, this and, one's temporary. It, it's temporary. We have a you know a building from God, and he he goes on to say we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. You know, but in between there, he's like we do have the Holy Spirit. We know we'll get a new body, and then he goes on in verse eleven where he's like, since the we then know what it means to fear the Lord, we try to persuade men, but. He comes down and makes that statement where it says that we don't regard anyone in a worldly point of view. And he's talking about people who have the Holy Spirit of God who put their faith in Jesus. And it says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. And, I love and that. so when you hear a story about this, you say, what happened? This guy's in prison, did all these things. He finds a Bible. He surrenders to the Lord. Well, just think about having the ability to be on the earth lose your way, do the most awful things imaginable, and you can actually become a new creation. Yeah. And we see it over and over and over and over. 
And it's the most powerful thing you'll see on earth. No, it is. And, and we'll see the, the, the ramification and his ascension. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. It was he who gave some to be apostles. They're locked up in jail at the current time when this was written. Yeah. The Apostle Paul. Some to be prophets. There's a few. Some to be evangelists. They preach the gospel. Some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and has and become mature, attaining to the whole fullness of Christ. Pretty interesting account oh, yeah. about people who will help in this forward movement right. of the Jesus and his exactly. death on a cross and his res- resurrection. Which is exactly why we do this podcast. So one of the reasons why... You see, I'm the guy that found that on the other side of the... On the road in the trash. Yeah. God said, I'll use you. Right. Everybody's usable. Everybody's usable. Which is Well, God designed this this creation. Everything has a purpose. Yeah. Yep. Including humans. Including us. Oh, including us. You know, I say that all the time. You know, there's a lot of Old Testament verses that say... When, when God was being blamed, he would say over and over, he's like, don't I give rain to fall on the crops of the righteous and the unrighteous? Don't I give gifts? I fall on both of you. Yeah, don't I give gifts to men? And, and you think about that. You see a lot of gifted people that God made right. who are not Christians who do wonderful things in well, our society. Yeah. I mean, look, when your heart st- starts going bad, you're not going to check and see if the guy working on you is a follower of Jesus. He, you know, he has a set of skills that can help you whether he's following Jesus or not. Yep. And I believe those are from God. Now he wants us to use them for him mm. in in his name, but I think that's we miss that sometimes of all the things that are going on in the world and we think God's nowhere around, but you see even that design and purpose in non-Christians and Christians, and even the way the earth functions as far as what you're well, saying, yeah. God designed everything for a purpose. Yeah. And, and, he was talking, Phil just read about unity. Well, and I look at, when I look at creation, it's unity, everything's perfect. And all, you know, all the systems work together to produce the final purpose that God intended it to have. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's why you have rain and you have floods and all this stuff. And that's why your body heals, and that's why crops grow. And well, oh, yeah. you can put fat fertilizer in yeah. it, right? But you know, you just think if you didn't have some living agent behind this, we we just take it for granted, is what I'm saying. Yeah, and unity is a cause that's larger than what we disagree on. And of course, we've been talking some about politics and all that, but that ultimately unity is that. And when when Jesus is the drawing force that does that that changes the things we disagree with each other over because we realize at the end of the day, we still love Jesus. Well, Jesus overrides all that. Exactly. Speaking okay. the truth, speaking the truth in love. I said in the last, uh, one of our last podcasts that I was talking about the, the one of the ways you know you're in the vein of the kingdom is that, that word peace, if you're experiencing peace, peace and so you know like what is the emotion what's the like what is it evoking in you does it ultimately lead to a spirit of peace or does it lead to a spirit of unrest rage anger fear Mm -hmm. all those things and i think that's that why we've been in ephesians and i I think when when paul talks about unity you notice how he anchors it in peace he says uh, make every effort to keep the spirit of unity through the bond of peace yeah and I think that there's a direct correlation to unity, and it's not that we all agree on every single thing. That's kind of the whole point, that you have diversity, but yet we're still coming together in in a, in a unified way. Kind of like a marriage, you know, me and Jill are two different people. You know, we're physically two different people. We're spiritually two different people, are two different souls. I mean, we're, our bodies are, she's a female, I'm a male, but yet God created a union here that together we actually become one flesh and there's a unity in the diversity. 
which is reflective, by the way, of the very nature of who God is. God is three distinct persons, Father, Son, Spirit, but yet they're one being. So do you see the unity and the diversity? So I think that that's what kind of the picture that that we're kind of moving towards whenever we think about this idea of unity. So that's a perfect segue, Zach, into the reason I wanted Sai to stay over is because uh, yesterday I preached out of Hebrews 10 uh, at our church, and I love it because Sai always gives me good feedback um, when I'm preaching. And we the reason we're in the book of Hebrews is because we had studied it on our podcast last year. But, you know, it's a little bit lag behind. We were just now getting to this because I like to try to keep the sermon series that we do on the podcast also uh, at our church. Because we're giving you all your points. I'm getting all my stuff. I mean, I'm <laughs> surrounded by preachers, you know, who are fantastic and teachers. So exactly. So I like to do that. But obviously, we're, we're lagging a little behind. But I did think about this, Jace. Hebrews out of Hebrews 4.12 says the word of God is living and active. And sharper than sharper than a double edged sword, cuts to the marrow. The idea, but that idea of it being living, and so we when we studied it here, it was we had great study and learned a lot of stuff, and hopefully imparted a lot of stuff to our podcast audience. But now, a year later, after with the since what we've studied since then, stuff in Hebrews is coming even more to life. <laughs> well, right, and even <laughs> and that's most, the beauty. That's why people, it's living and active. I want to say this again, and I know I'm beating a dead horse here, but. Most times when people read that, or 2 Timothy 3, 16, all scriptures God breathed, Mm. religious people just think only the Bible. But the Bible is a person. Yes. So person wrote it. The word. (laughs) So when you read uh, Hebrews 4, 12, it's got to be bigger than the Bible. Because John 1, you're like, bigger than the Bible? What's bigger than the Bible? The one who wrote it. God. Yeah. (laughs) But it's a very important point. Yeah. Because a lot of people say we got to get back to the Bible, and once they detach that that it being about a person, they'll take random scriptures in the Bible yes. and try to apply some doctrine that is not within the character of God, right. and we see it over and over and over. So that's I wanted to bring up John one because it does say in the beginning was the Word. Right. They they need to change that. We need to get back to to the Bible. What you're really getting back to is God. Exactly. exactly. And, and I think it's an important point because when he said in the beginning was the Word and yeah. the Word was with God and the Word was God and nothing that has been made that has been made was made without him. And all, it's like a riddle. And then when he gets to 14, it says, the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And so that same person, Jesus, in John 5, in the context of what we're going to talk about in your sermon, mm-hmm. They, the Jewish nation, who God set up as his chosen people, were arguing with the person who actually wrote the Bible, saying, we don't agree with you. We don't think this is happening. I'm paraphrasing, but that's and what And then, they Jace, were you made this point before, which is a really strong one. I've never forgotten it. When we were studying the book of John, that same passage you just quoted, when you go back to Genesis 1, and see the word being spoken, the creative power of God. What was hovering over the spirit of the water? The spirit, the Holy Spirit Holy of God. Spirit. So yeah. there's always been a connection with oh, yeah. the word and the spirit in all facets, way before the book was ever written. So, Jay, there's a lot of issues out there with the economy, with inflation, a lot of stuff that goes on. But we try to be positive, right? We're trying to like make a difference and be positive. Yeah, and I think when it comes to that, if you can find a company that kind of lines up with your morals and and the direction that you want things to go, it's getting two birds with one stone. There you go, and that's what Patriot Mobile does. That's why we love these guys and what they're doing. They fight for the First and Second Amendment, uh, sanctity of life, and also our military and first responders. Uh, They do a great job supporting those guys as well. They support conservative causes and put America first. And so we're asking you to check them out. You're going to get the same nationwide coverage as the big providers because Patriot Mobile operates across all three major networks. Plus, they back their service with coverage guarantee. Their 100% U.S.-based customer service team will find the best plan that fits your needs. You can even keep your number or your phone or you can upgrade. Here's what you do. Go to patriotmobile.com slash fill 
or call 972-PATRIOT. Right now, you're going to get a free month when you use the offer code Phil. So don't get fooled by other providers pretending to share your values or having the same coverage. They don't, and they can't. Join us. Switch to America's only Christian conservative mobile provider, Patriot Mobile. Go to patriotmobile.com slash Phil, or call them at 972-PATRIOT for your free month of service today. I've taken flack on here by saying that the Bible's about Jesus or let's agree on Jesus, start there and go from there. And people are like, I don't know about that. It's like, what are you talking about you don't know about it? This Bible is about Jesus because Jesus is revealing the God of heaven and and earth. And and you could attach the preservation to life to that is what the Bible's about. I've been adding that because God is eternal. Yeah. So the whole reason Jesus came down here is if you're going to live with God, well, he's eternal and we're not. So I, something has to be done. Well, I, Jesus I, love, had to come. I love this because I I went back, you know, and said, uh, okay, it's not let's get back to the Bible. It's let's get back to Jesus. Yeah. Okay, yeah. because hey, everything else is meaningless. Yeah. Well, people know the Bible and don't know Jesus. And well, I was going to quote that John 5 where, remember, Jesus said, you think by the scriptures that you have eternal life, yet you refuse to come to me Yeah, because I'm more yeah. eternal life. And you say, well, what was he saying? He was saying the scriptures that you're hanging your hat on were about me. Well, no, no, because I, I meant to say this, uh, you know, you're going back to Jesus, okay? And then you said, okay, what did he say in, in John 1? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Uh, this is the Word. Yeah. Side does that for effect. It's okay. Yeah. So I, oh, hey, you're yeah, stay behind your mic. There. Yeah, stay behind your mic. It ain't the Bible. Yeah. All We're right. talking the Word. Well, who's the Word? Jesus. <laughs> yeah. it's, hey, folks. <laughs> Use this some is, common sense. This is yeah. this is a true illustration why Jesus actually makes you smart. Because if you met Cy, oh. you'd say not very bright, but that's you're right, Cy. Well, no, exactly no, right. hey, that's why I tell people all the time. Hey, look, you need to look at this crazy old man known as Uncle Cy. Yeah, I'm living proof that the Word, okay, <laughs> is alive and well. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, so let me set this Great. up. Let me set it up because Cy told me. Uh, before even I got into Hebrews 10, he said, be, be sure and tell all the guys that everybody's been preaching in our church. Jay's been preaching. we got a couple other guys too. And uh, what a good job they've been doing because oh. Hebrews has been very vibrant, very good. And I knew it would be because it does give you that big picture of what this is all about and how yeah. you get the whole Old Testament in with the New Testament. And it's all that and all that, this book contains 66 different books. Yep. Okay, the more I study and the more I'm around people that are studying, okay, all these books are about one person, mm-hmm. and it's all connected. That's right. They're well, all right. connected, and they make each other, they make each other's books more clear and more powerful. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. That's why you get into this and you grow in your faith. You you become convinced oh, no. that this is not made up, yeah. which is a really weird moment, you know, in, oh, in, yeah. in your faith, because you're trying to explain that to people, and they're like, "Oh, I'm," they're skeptical. But the more you study it, you're like, "No, no, I'm serious." They they didn't make this up because if you if you connected it all, you're like, you're gonna be convinced. What is it? Forty different authors. Yeah, forty or forty one. Yeah, over how many on. years? Probably like 1,600, maybe. Three, well, about 3,000 3, all the way back. This yeah. thing is tailor fitted. Yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. Woven yeah. through history, yeah. not like. Yeah. You know, this is not a one time event because Hebrew starts out saying, with, uh, with this surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses. Well, yeah. who are they talking about here? Yeah, they didn't start off saying that's twelve one. They're talking yeah, about everybody right. in this book. Yeah, yeah. everybody's right. been watching. And guess what? Everybody in this book's talking about one person. <laughs> that's right. I love it. Hey, that, when are you going to wake up, human being? Say, <laughs> what were you going to say? 
Zach's raising his hand. I preach. Uh, you know, but no, I, 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 <laughs> the verse that uh, Jace mentioned, he said Matthew 5, but he, he meant John 5. Yeah, John that, 5. Uh, that I think that's a key a key verse that we have to think about because the question I've pondered this for years, and I think it, and the answer is clear from this text that is it possible? Is it possible to actually worship the Bible? Is it actually possible to take the Word of God and turn it into an idol? And it yes. is because that's the point. That that's what he's saying to them. He's saying. You you know the Bible. You study the Bible. You study the scriptures diligently. And here's the problem: by them, you think you're saved. Yep. So they the the accusation of Christ was: you actually think that you're saved by the Word of God, but you miss the God of the Word who's standing right here in front of you. That's where you messed up. You missed who the yep. who it was about. And so that's what happens whenever you separate Christ from the scriptures, which does obviously happen. It happened with the Pharisees because that's Jesus's accusation. Well, and it certainly happens today when, when you elevate doctrines of Christ yeah. over the Christ of the doctrine. And you, you, you see it. I mean, you see it I, all the time. I feel like we should read this just because we're going around. I, I want to read exactly what it says. It's John five thirty nine and 40. It says, you diligently study the scriptures, speaking of the Old Testament, because they didn't have the yep. New Testament. You diligently study the scriptures because you think that by them you possess eternal life. These are the scriptures that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. Well, now that's right now. Well, now you asked me about, well, what would you, uh, I, I told you why you was preaching about Hebrew. I said you needed to add one, one thing in there. Where Moses was talking to God and he said, okay, Yo, know, who do I, who do, he asked God, who do I say sent me? And God told him, said, you tell him, you tell him, I am sent me. Mm. Well, that's God the Father speaking, okay? But then fast forward, Jesus the Word has become flesh and is on the premises. What did he tell his disciples? I am. I am the way, I am the life, I am the resurrection. Mm -hmm. I am the truth, I'm the gate, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm the Yeah, I'm all of it. I'm the shepherd. That's why I, I, I'm going to start everywhere I preach from now, and I'm going to start with Jesus is greater than everything. Yeah. Mm. No, you're right. Yeah. I mean, Si, his nickname is I Am. Yeah. Just think about this. Which, I know. That's why I said, Al's only thing you missed was, hey, you need no, to bring I Am. And I actually that. saw it because it's in the text that yeah. you're right. That could have been a whole other point. All right, let me set this up. Set it up because if you read the verses that you read yesterday in Hebrews 10, they seem. I forgot what the phrase I used to you. They archaic. seem archaic. You know, it doesn't seem practical. And to size point, and Zach, what they were making is if you detach Jesus from the Bible or yeah. God as a person from the Bible, what happens is you get detached in your life. God gets detached Hold in on. your life. So you can go, we, we start doing modern day temple worship, which is what the Jewish nation mm -hmm. Was built well, on. They kind of it's like you push them in the ditch. They're not on the highway. Well, yeah. right. So that's the setup. Yeah, that's good. And in fact, um, I made the point yesterday, which Zach just made it, but I did it right in the middle, kind of the crux of the sermon. I said, a lot of people have approached me and said, my life is a mess, but you know what? I know I need to go to church more. I know I need to read my Bible. I know I need to pray. <laughs> so they start giving you what they think. I've heard it. Thousands. How many times oh, yeah. have you heard that? Oh yeah. And so what you're, and I said yesterday, all those are good things. There's nothing wrong with meeting with the brothers. There's nothing, of course, reading your Bible is good, but none of those things can accomplish what you're trying to get to with them because you don't know Jesus, or in the case of Ephesians one seventeen, Jace, you don't know him well enough. Yeah, you because know, exactly. he said, "I want to know him better." Yeah. Is what the what's Jesus. of first importance? Well, Jesus, that right. would be Jesus. So we're in the summertime, uh, which means a lot of things for different people. Uh, our good friends at Bespoke Post, what it means for them is they have a new premium lineup of their Box of Awesome collections. And I have one here, Jace, that came to my house uh, that I'm super excited about. Um, you know, so you, you, when you go to boxofawesome.com, you're going to take a quiz. And so your answers help them pick out the right Box of Awesome for you. 
and it's free to join. They release new items every month across a ton of different categories. Um, and this is the box that came to me, uh, which is awesome. So in here, you'll see a knife sharpening kit. Oh, lovely. Which is very good because you need have. a sharp knife. And not, of course, to be outdone with the actual knife set. Oh, wow. It came as well. Now, it's funny because I don't. we're going to fight over this, I guess, because when Lisa saw this, you know, normally she's not into my box of awesome, but she said, make sure and bring that home. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess she didn't want you boys getting in on it. Um, when you become a member, you have access to stellar discounts across a plethora of products, sometimes 30% off or more. Plus, with each box of awesome, you're supporting a small business. I love this. 90% of everything that comes in your box of awesome is from a small and up and coming brand. It's free to sign up. You can skip a month. You can cancel anytime. Uh, it's a little surprise that shows up every month. You get 15% off your first box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com. Enter the code Phil at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com. Use the code Phil. 15% off your first order. Boxofawesome.com. Use the code Phil. All right, here we go. So, oh. so, so, side of your point, you were telling me to tell the guys because the week before last week, the guy who was preaching before me, David. He he preached on uh, Hebrews eleven. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, Hebrews nine. And Jace had kind of was was going to get into that at Hebrews nine, but I was. But we had visitors. We had visitors, and so he basically shared the gospel, which was great. So, so Dave took that and he talked about Hebrews nine. And what he did was it was amazing. I encourage you guys to go watch it. WFR Church. Because one of our staff members is an artist, and she's amazing. And we've done this before. Trent used to do a lot where he, when he preaches, she draws a picture on a big board. I mean, it's just a blank board when she starts. But she literally is, while he's preaching, draws out on a board in an artistic way what he's talking about. It's amazing. Speaking of talents given to human beings. Oh, my goodness. Because it's incredible. The old covenant, then the new covenant. Yeah. Okay, and why we were talking and what about bridged it, them. it won't work. Exactly. That was the reason Christ established the new covenant. So they drew. she drew a picture. He preached, and out of, I'm in Hebrews 9 now, but I'm setting up what I, what I went into. And she drew a picture of the old tabernacle and temple, and there's a lamb there and the sacrifice and all that. And then she took red paint and sprinkled all blood over Blood everywhere. It. Blood's everywhere because yep. that was what was happening. They said, yep. you know, sprinkle with blood. Then she drew a picture of a modern-day church building, ours. Yep. And she did the same thing. And she talked about how people will do that. They'll say, well, that's my new temple. This is where I go. This is my sacrifice. Yeah, you can't eat in it and all this Exactly. Other and so they paint that picture, and in the middle they had a curtain – and then when he gets to the, the to the big part of his sermon, they pull that one off, and it was a cross, yeah. And it had blood all over, or red paint all over to represent that. That's the one. That's where you find everything pulled together is who Jesus is and what he did. So and that's how you approach the holiness of holiness. So that was all up. Christ. That was all up on stage, and so and I asked him to leave it up because so when I come in to Hebrews ten, which by the way is an extension of that whole conversation. The Hebrew writer just kind of wraps that up and then asks for a response from us. When he gets to that point, it's interesting. I took one step further back, and I said, look, the reason all this is in place is because somewhere before we were ever created, a being made a decision that God's will wasn't enough for him anymore. Yeah. His will had to be number one. We don't know much detail about it, but the Bible gives us enough clues that this being— that we know as Satan, the evil one, all the names in the Bible, he made a decision that God's will wasn't good enough for him anymore. And his purpose, he, he didn't want to... He, he didn't, didn't want to fulfill wanna, whatever his purpose. And yeah. we don't even know because he's not the same as us. He's not a human being. Well, there's he, a few allusions in Ezekiel, you know, yeah. talking about he lost his place in heaven, and, you know, but and and I think there's something to that. Yeah. He, he was created for a purpose. Yep, yep. Just like Adam and Eve, yep. they it was completely laid out. You're, he gave them dominion. You work the garden. You can eat the tree of life, which means you live forever. Yep. And but now they have. You just think what happens, which you made the point. You were just giving a summary, but now this evil being, this spiritual being, Satan, is then tempting other created beings. Yeah. Even though they were different from him, they have bodies. To do the same thing he did. Right. 
and and, we, and, and, and he didn't make them do it because they chose to do it, but he just presented that. And we had a purpose. The first man and the first woman, they had a purpose. They were in the garden. They were fulfilling the earth with people, and they were having a relationship with God. Everything was great. Yeah. And then he had a whisper and said, you will be like God if you, eat, if you do what he told you not to do, knowing good and evil. And I was like, that point is where the first two human beings said, you know what, God? Not your will, mine, but mine. Yeah. And from that point forward, we've all made that choice at some point in our life where we chose our own will over the will of God. So I just want to make the point. I use the uh, modern terminology because I wanted to bring it, as Jace was describing, into the modern, where you wouldn't get stuck with the animal sacrifice, but think this matters today. And I use deep fake and cheap fake. Yeah. These were political words that I've been hearing, and I had to look them up. It's about AI is what they're about. And and we talked about that on the podcast. I even mentioned Jay's talking about eternal intelligence. But the idea is Satan is the inventor of the deep fake. He started that, and then he starts this cheap fake that anything can fulfill your life other than God. It's not true. I mean, yeah, it's it, completely false. It's completely the false. opposite happens. Right. So we get to Hebrews chapter 10, and it was really interesting because the text sets it up. It says the law is only a shadow. That was my first point. Shadow. Mm-hmm of the good things that are coming, active verb, not the realities themselves. So he says right off the bat that this whole setup is shadow. It's not a real thing. And I would I would put in here, since we are in a world of fantasy, yeah. that shadow is a fantasy. It is. Everything's a fantasy nowadays. Fantasy football, fantasy this. That's a great point. <laughs> you know, That's a great no, point. I'm serious. You're right, I'm because serious. then we're all active. Like, just because a guy makes 10 catches, like, we're in the game. No, you're not. No. You're not in you're the game. You're just watching yeah. it. No one yeah. cares. <laughs> That's a great point, sir. And so so he says that. it's only So it's not reality. For this reason, the rest of verse 1, it can never by the same sacrifices, repeated endlessly year after year, make perfect those who draw near to worship. In other words, it's it's non-effective. Otherwise, would they not have stopped being offered? In other words, his point is, if this would work over thousands of years of making sacrifices, it should have worked. But it didn't. People still had the bad conscience. They still had the sin. Yeah, and I go back to my what I said, okay, the— uh, Doing the same thing and expecting a different result is the definition of insanity. But right. there is a hidden, you didn't talk about this, but there is a hidden truth in here that when what God is revealing to us is where there are sins, and when you decide not to fulfill his will and purpose, there are consequences. Correct. Even when they sinned and di- disobeyed, you notice that they realized they were naked and he made animal skins covering for them, yeah. which means what? There was a couple of animals that died. There was a, even a consequence for them to be yeah. covered, you know. So I do think that theme is mm-hmm. is there, but go ahead. And the idea that cleansing comes to something else, because the next line he says, for the worshipers would have been cleansed once for all, So because this is ongoing, yep. and here's the key, and would no longer have felt guilty for their sins. Uh-oh. Now, where does that come from? In other words, now we've introduced something new. It's not just quid pro quo. I have an action. I go make a sacrifice. We're all good. Everything's good till the next time I show up. Now he's talking about something inside you that says, you know what? That's wrong. But you know, Al, I think you really hit on something. We all know the Bible and we take this for granted. But even bringing up the a possibility 2,000 years ago in a letter that there's somehow a way not to be guilty about your sins yeah. is so fascinating. It is. That every yeah. human being should should get up on the front row and say, what? Yeah. I mean, just think about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got my sins. Y'all got y'all's. It, we're talking about there. It, you're, the fact that you're saying that this didn't make you feel guilty for their sins is implying there is a way for you to live and not Feel guilty for your sins? Well, that's where that thing where it comes in, in and why I love it. God says, once you are, you've reenacted my son's death, burial, and resurrection and come out of the water, I've made you a new creation. Exactly. We're back to that same principle. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. All right. Yeah. Well, go ahead. Al, All right. So, so it's not reality, and now it's not effective. And I used an illustration about effectiveness 
talking about how we order this stuff that comes in the mail and we get it and in size words, it's a piece of junk. <laughs> it ain't it ain't what it won't we work. It's funny it, and I thought it of it a won't work. I thought of a lot of funny ideas you could have done, but I'm glad you didn't because what you were saying was yeah. more important. But immediately it jumped in my head when I ordered a knife one night because I saw he he cut through a shoe. You know, and it just got me. I thought that thing will cut through a shoe. If it cuts through a shoe, I got to have it. I got, and the first thing I used it for, the thing broke. (laughs) The knife broke. And then I thought, well, why did I need to cut through my shoe anyway? If I needed to cut through my shoe, I need to go to the hospital. No, no, I don't know if I was, but I got to say this, got what I got on my The old covenant and then the new one. Christ established the new one. Mm -hmm. That means the old is gone and the new is right. Okay, well, here's the thing, okay? We talked about shadows and fantasies and all this stuff. Hey, go with the original. Yeah. Original is better. Okay, the original is the real deal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know, I was making the point, and Jay's made it beautifully, because we, we try to get the cheap knockoffs to do what the original good stuff does better. Hey. You got to go, when you want a knife, look, it's going to be expensive. Go buy you a good knife. You don't. You may not be cutting through shoes, but it's going to work. I know? deem that as a sin that I spent $20. <laughs> <laughs> for a knife that broke. Well, I don't know about sin, but it was ignorance. <laughs> ah, it was right. sin. It was so, so it's not reality. It's not effective. Yeah. And then here's verse three. Those sacrifices, the Hebrew writer says, are an annual reminder of sins, which is a really strong point. You think about it. So it's not effective. It's not reality. Also, you can't forget. It's unforgettable. Yeah. In other words, the, this process only reminds you year after year after year I'm not right. I mean, well, that's why that that a uh, new creations is so important. Yeah, and God I, says, "Hey, I remember them no more." Yeah. Well, we'll get to that, but and yeah. I and I did the illustration of how in relationships, and I and I mostly deal with marriage stuff. When someone violates a covenant with another person, there's only a certain way to get about healing and moving forward. Otherwise, the event becomes a reminder year after year after year that we had a break in our covenant. And it happens all the time. You don't have true forgiveness, and when you don't have true repentance, which go together, by the way, you will never get to true submission. Well, you'll you'll never stay married. And you won't stay married. And you'll wind up leaving, and then you take all your problems into the next marriage. Because it's like you got inflammation in a joint. Right. Exactly. It's It's just festering. That's right. Every time you bring it up, throw it in my face, it's festering. It's an unhealed wound. Yeah, right, it's listen. an unhealed wound. All right, so now we've got we've got uneffective, I mean not effective, not a reality, not able to forget. And then here was the big one in, in 10.4. It is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. It's not even possible for the system to work. Because it was never designed to work. Well, and I look was. at I look at that as okay. All of that is no worth. Right. Well, you asked a good question. I think everybody thinks of it at this point. Well, if if it was impossible, why did God? Why did God do it? And in fact, and I want to mention this because there's a podcast listener, and I don't have your name in front of me. I'm sorry. It was it was a woman that asked that question. She said, "Why would God do that?" She asked, yeah, "Why, that just why did He set up this system? Why did He set up a system that doesn't work?" So, so here's what, why I think He did it. Is that, and this I mentioned in the last podcast, because when we get to this point where we realize that we have, we can't do it ourselves, we're at an impossible place. That's what God was creating for us to see. Then you have three possible responses. One is you double down on the system, you just keep doing it, which is what was happening here in Hebrews. The reason he wrote the book is because they were just kept doing it. And they were like, no, no, wait. Remember the Messiah, the one we been talking about yeah. for all this, the yeah. prophecies he and all? Came. He, 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 he came. He came here. Yeah. He, he took care of all this. He's established yeah. a new covenant, to your point, Si. But they doubled down. They just said, you know what? It's all we know. We're just going to keep yeah, it. Yeah, we're going to go back to it. So that's one thing. And you can make that application into a person's life now. I'm just going to keep doing the same thing, even though it's not working. Second thing is you can check out and create a new system for yourself. Now it's going to be... I'm going to fill this hole that can't be filled with more sin or other gods or disbelief yep. or yeah, I'm going to turn into a, you know, whatever political idea. I mean, oh. wherever people go to try to fill that and that usually doesn't work. And the third one is, is when you say, you know what, I'm going to ask God, what can I do? Because I have no answers. 
And so that's what God has been driving for. And even all of Jewish history is to get you to the point where Jesus is all you want. Mm-hmm. And all you know. So I think that's the answer to the question. The reason why is this is, and I'm just going to read this next text because I don't give you the whole rest of the sermon. You can go and watch it because we're going to run out of time. But here's what he says, Hebrews 10, 5. Therefore, when Christ came into the world, and I just stopped there yesterday. I was like, he could have just stopped it right there <laughs> because that's the answer to all of it. He yeah. came here to solve this impossible problem that we couldn't figure out. And we kind of talked about, me and you, after your sermon, how that tied in with Hebrews 2. Yes. Because all of Hebrews 2. Ephesians 2. I mean, no, Hebrews 2, where he talked about becoming a human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, there's a whole section. I read it about three podcasts ago. Hebrews 2, 5 through... uh, 18. Because what did I call it? I said the human game changer. It was. It, 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 this is, but this is so important because that's the biggest problem the Jews had a problem with as his chosen people was that God could become a human. Well, that, that was like, what are you talking about? That can't happen because they, the God they were following was not a human at that time. But even though the scriptures were saying a son of man is yeah, coming. That's right. And so Jesus is saying, I'm here. And so Hebrews 2, 5 through 18 explains why he did that. In fact, to the point to where he said, and I'm not ashamed that I did it. That's right. And so it's very powerful because it says he came to destroy the work of the evil one. Uh, It set up all these precedents, which is, I think, when you read this one verse, therefore, when Christ came into the world, you must Go back and read Hebrews too, because that was where he set all that up. That no, you're right. So good, and and I even said he was the final solution for all problems. It's where the Son of God becomes the Son of Man. All that happens in this moment, and then look at this. Now, this is what I wouldn't have discovered before, Jason, until we talked about it on the podcast, because he's about to quote. He said, "Then Christ came into the world, and he said, talking about Christ, and then he's going to quote Psalm 40." So well, it's, this is Christ speaking through David, through David, yeah. through the Spirit of Christ, yeah. a thousand years earlier. <laughs> this is incredible. It's a mind and bender. It's very yeah. good. But look what he says. He said, "Here's David speaking in Psalm 40, which that Psalm is so amazing." But here's what here's the part where Jesus is literally given a prophecy about himself: sacrifice and offering you did not desire, and then listen to this, but a body. You prepared for I've me. been prepared. A human body. A human yeah. body. Yeah. Which we've yeah. talked about here. And Jason yeah. said Hebrews 2. He said this a thousand years earlier. Then he goes back to his original point. With burnt offerings and sin offerings, you were not pleased. In other words, this system won't work. Then I said, Jesus, through David, here I am, to your point, side. I know. That's yeah. where I could have took off and done a whole thing yep. on I am. Oh, yeah. Here I am. It is written about me in the scroll, in this book. I have come to do your will, O oh God. And Which is goes, why I brought up the John 5. Yeah. It, he's The Hebrew writer said the same thing Jesus said. You think by these scriptures you can have eternal life, but these are written about me. And here's an example. Exactly. Psalm 40. Which, par- which, which parallels, I mean, almost it's such a beautiful parallel to from John 5 to John 17, 3. Of, yes. Uh, of where you really get eternal life. Jesus said it's, it's, it's to know the one true God and Jesus Christ is some whom he sent. Then you go right. Well, so who's the one true God? Well, you go right to Hebrews 1 8. But of the Son, he says, Your throne, O God. Yeah. What's he saying there? The, the, the Christ, the Son, is God. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. And I think that when you think about the book of Hebrews, there's a, a little book that was written. It's kind of easy to help us, but remember this. Um, they wrote about this acronym called HANDS about the book of Hebrews, and it's basically the name of the book is Putting Jesus in His Place. Let me read this. The HANDS, H. Jesus shares the honors of God. A, attributes. Jesus shares the attributes of God. N, names. Jesus shares the names of God. D, deeds. Jesus, Jesus shares the deeds of God. And then S, the seat. Jesus shares the seat of God's eternal throne. So you're seeing the book of Hebrews 
is making this case. And when you get to, to 10, that's why when he says it kind of towards the end of chapter 10, he basically says, if that ain't enough for you, there's nothing else. I mean, if you keep you keep on sinning after you've received it, there's nothing left. Like the, Jesus is not only is he more than enough, I mean, he is the fulfillment of all of this. And so it's all pointing back to this person of Jesus Christ. Okay, Jesus was the son of God, but okay, here comes the son of man. And a lot of people ask questions, wait, what are we doing here? Yeah. Well, you don't understand, okay? Jesus, the word left heaven and became flesh. Okay, yeah. he was born of a woman, man. That's right. Yeah. Jesus knows mankind. When times have reached their fulfillment. And what's the problem? It's God and man, so... Yeah. Why not have someone representing yeah. both? The first man sinned. That was Adam. Uh-oh. Well, hey, guess what? Here comes the second man that didn't sin. Yeah, that's right. So, here, so, here's, so here, let me wrap it up to give you the rest. Yeah, because I want you to give the end of this. A it thumbnail, because it's pretty powerful. So, so, Zach, you made a point a few podcasts back, and I worked that in my sermon. After Psalm 40, I thought, man, it's such a— rich psalm that, that David is saying, man, I just, I'm searching and I'm seeking. And then we get to Psalm 51, which is after the whole Bathsheba affair situation. Yeah. And now look, he's in his impossible situation because he has made a mess of things, his family, the kingdom. And then he uses words in Psalm 51, have mercy on me, wash me, cleanse me, crush me, restore me, uh, renew me, created me a new spirit. All those things he's realized, and then he says later, you didn't desire the sacrifices that I've been offering the whole time. You wanted this. You wanted me laying everything I have out to you. And so I made that point, and then I, then I went to the cross. I went to Jesus on the night before he died when he was having the most human of moment. It's his most son of man moment to me. Yeah. Is when he's facing the weight of the sin of all of humanity, and he says at the end of this little wrestling session with God, not my will, but yeah, yours yeah. be done, which is where we all get to, right? Yeah, but he said, it, said, hey, look, Father, is there any other way we can pull this off? Yeah. Right. Part of the declaration, though, I think when you use the term son of man, like, it, like this is also a reference to the Old Testament whenever this is used in the New Testament. And it's, it's, it, what he's saying is, hey, you know the guy in, in Daniel chapter 7? You know that guy that that, that, that they were that Daniel the, when they had the vision the prophet or the prophet Daniel saw predicting the, the coming of the eternal kingdom. Yes, yes. That, so, so this is connected to that. And he said, "I saw in the night visions, and behold, um, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man, and he came to the ancient of days and was presented before him, and to him who the son of man was given dominion and glory and a kingdom." That all yeah. peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. We actually mentioned this in the last podcast that, that this is so when Jesus, when they talk about Jesus being the Son of Man, it's not just saying that he's the Son of Man, it's actually a declaration of his dominion, of his power, of his authority, of his lordship, of his. I mean, he he's saying that he is the Christ. And I and that's why when you get that Psalms 51 passage, I mean. Only to a holy God can you come and cast yourself at his feet. And Jesus is that holy God. And I think that's Correct. kind of the— Let right, Al finish because so, he only has two minutes. So the last point, so he, he said there's a shadow, not reality. There's a solution, Jesus. And then the last point the Hebrew writers makes in this section is what I said was the sanctifying spirit. Here's what he said in verse Hebrews 10, 15. The Holy Spirit— so he's bringing him into play now. Yeah, also, first he brought up Jesus and David. Now right. he's in the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit Is also that. testifies to us about this. And then he's going to quote Jeremiah 31. And listen to this. This is so powerful. This is like going back and quoting Psalm 40. In Jeremiah, it says, This is the covenant I will make with them after that time. So you said this earlier, the new covenant. Yep. I will put my laws in their hearts, and, write and I will write mind. them on their minds, and their sins and lawless acts, I remember no more. Now, how is it ever going to get inside of us at that place? How would that possibly happen? Only because when Jesus left, he sent his spirit. Ooh, and there, that's what convicts us now. So we talked about how do we get convicted? How are our consciences know? Because the Holy Spirit lives in us. And look, when we're living in the spirit, 
our sins will be remembered no more. And then Zach, to your point in verse 18, and where they have been forgiven, there's sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. In other words, now we have the spirit of God. That's why we're cleansed. That's why we're perfect. That's why we're in him. And that's why he did what he did for us to do that. And that's why in John 14, 15, 16, and 17, he said, unless I go and send the spirit, you'll never fully understand why I came and why this system, by the way, oh, exactly. never worked. That's why I wanted you to get to that point, because I feel like sometimes in churches, somebody should just get up and say, look, your problem, a lot of our problems are this lack of forgiveness, even forgiving yourself. No, no. That's one it, of our it, big major problems. Yeah. When you read this, he's like, because of you that you're surrendering to Jesus and you have God's spirit now in your inner being, you are dwelling with God. And God says, I will not remember your sins anymore. <laughs> well, you just need to say, well, if he's not going to remember them, exactly. I'm not either. Yeah, I'm not exactly. either. That's over. Yeah. That's right. And you're like, do I need a 10-week lesson? to? Un nope. You need a 10-second acknowledgement <laughs> that those sins are gone. Well, and if you would just do that, look, it's amazing how God's grace inspires you, lights your fire, and that's how we get the motivation to live like him. But, but here's the thing that most people don't get, okay? You've got the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, okay? And here's the way this goes. God so loved the world that he sent his Son, okay? The Son comes and does his remarkable thing about dying on a cross for and takes care of our sin and death problem. Okay. Yeah. And then the son bodily ascends to heaven, but hey, he said, Don't worry, guys. Just once I leave, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to send my spirit back to you. Exactly. There's three, and but there's three of them, but they're one in everything. Mm -hmm. And we're in it. And we're in it. <laughs> so, so next week I get to follow up, which is a great blessing. <laughs> the back when I used to preach all the time, you got to do this, but now I only preach infrequently. But I get to follow up with the back half of this text, and it's really interesting because the whole text is about how do we respond to something so good, and it's one phrase. I'm going to tease it right now today. The one phrase is, "Don't turn back." In other words, all the things we could do in response to that is don't go back to the old way. Don't do that. Go with the original. Go with the original. It's so much better. All right, we're out of time. Si, thanks for staying over <laughs> oh. and being a trooper. Hey. We appreciate it. We'll see you Bye, next brother. time on Unashamed. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.